We are here in Ardbeg. We're going for a fall colors trail run with the Tri-City Jeep Club. And in this episode, I'll show a few clips from the run, but it's not gonna be about the run, but it is gonna be something that's very important for those of you who have manual transmissions, and it's something we all need to know. So when we're on a run with a member in our club who has manual transmission, we can let them know about this. So stick around. It was around this time last year that I made a video on how to locate the trailhead for the Ardbeg Trail. I showed you a little bit on how to get there, I showed you a few shots of the scenery in that area, and it really left me with the feeling of wanting to do this run with the club. And with no lockdown this year in place, I was able to join the club at Ardbeg Trail. Here you have a view of the campground in the area at the trailhead, and some people camped just in their tents, some cheaper jeeper tv style inside their vehicle then you have these fancy rigs right here that we're going to cover one day and then these other fancy rigs with trailers and rooftop tents and then of course taj mahal here how they got that in must have been a challenge and of course the day of the run a couple of jeepers showed up such as myself okay well maybe a few jeepers showed up Okay, well, maybe a few more showed up as well. The Tri-City Jeep Club had a huge turnout this year, so we separated into three separate groups and we went off onto three separate trails. You may have noticed already by now that it was definitely a wet time to be out on the trail with lots of water and mud hazards. And then I learned there were even more. So it was clear that there was lots to learn on bringing your Jeep through hazards like this. I also realized there's something special to learn about going through hazards like this if you have a manual transmission. Let's talk to Neil from the Tri-City Jeep Club to see what we can learn. In today's episode, I showed you a few clips from our trail run, but I want to talk to you about something very important that all Jeepers need to know, and it has to do with the manual transmission. And you might say, hey, Dino, I've got an automatic transmission. It's all right, I don't need to know that. But you should know about this so you could share it with your Jeep mates in your club. I have with me Neil from the Tri-City Jeep Club, a resident expert in our club. And what we're gonna talk about is why if you have a manual transmission and you get caught in a puddle of water or mud, you shouldn't put your foot down on that clutch. Neil, can you explain to us why that's so? Sure, I mean, basically the, the clutch uh, housing is open to the atmosphere or the pool that you're in if it's deep enough. And it has to be deep right. to do this, deeper than you might expect. But uh, when you separate those clutch plates, if you've got mud in there and it gets in between them, it's, it's actually a tremendous lubricant and you will not, the, the clutch will not operate anymore. Uh -huh. I, I did actually one time have to tow one of the guys off the trail because he did exactly that. He got stuck in a mud hole and depressed the clutch and, and it got well, uh, uh, well messed up. So um, on my old TJ, um, there is a, there's a clutch interlock, so you have to put your foot in the clutch in order to start the Jeep. But there is a fuse that you can move and that will bypass that interlock so that you can then start the Jeep without putting your foot in the clutch. So the concept is that if you do get stuck in a mud hole and you need to select reverse but you're in forward, I mean, presumably you're just sitting there in forward with the wheels turning but you're not going anywhere, mm -hmm. um, you turn the engine off put it in reverse manually and then start it while it's in reverse. Now obviously you've got to be in low, low ratio for this, um, but that will just start to crawl you out backwards and the engine will start. Right, right. And that will save your clutch, but it'll cost you your starter. Oh. Because when you operate this, because the starter is right, in, certainly on the TJ, it's right down by the bottom of the, of the clutch housing. Right. So uh, if you 
activate the starter when it's immersed in mud, it sucks the mud into the innards of the starter. And then, of course, it starts you fine then, but you drive away mm -hmm. and uh, it bakes in with the warmth of the engine as you drive along. And next time you ask it to start, it just doesn't. I see. But Starters are a lot cheaper and easier to fix than a clutch. Right. So right. It, you 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 pick your you pick your evil there. Now I heard it's not like a hundred percent that if you did put your foot down on the clutch that you're going to completely destroy your transmission, but it's not good. It's not good. I I've actually done it when I've thought, am I un am I too far under? I'm not absolutely sure. So you do a quick dip of the clutch, and I've got away with it. Ah. Um, the time that uh, that friend really messed his up he got stuck in a, a, a mud hole and he tried going forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards I, and that that really told it for okay him. for yeah. our viewers i'm going to have a mm -hmm. link in the description section which will have some more information if you wanted to follow up but can you tell us what would be the ideal thing to do if you have a manual transmission and you got in deep into a, a puddle or some mud and you're stuck Really, the best thing to do is to just leave it running. As I say, leave it in gear. Your wheels will probably be turning, but you're not going anywhere. <laughs> That's why you're stuck. Until somebody can get a line on you and pull you out. That way, the starter won't get damaged, the clutch won't get damaged. That's right. And should you shut off your engine and water go up your muffler... It, it can do, yeah. Because, of course, it, it like just like your diffs and your, and your transfer case, everything's warm, especially your exhaust. And if you shut it off and it, the water all around it cools it, the gas inside contracts and it sucks the stuff in. I actually had to replace my cat and everything back wow. one time when I got badly stuck in a mud hole. So right. there you go, whether you <laughs> got a TJ? TJ. Yeah. TJ or a JK or a JL mm -hmm. or a JT, if you have a manual transmission, this is something you need to know about. I'll have those links that I talked about. And thank you so much for helping us with this. You're welcome. Hey, I hope that you found that interesting. Now let's move on to our tip segment. Now for some cheaper, jeeper tips. For this week's cheaper, jeeper tip, I want to stick with the theme of going through mud or water hazards. And this tip applies to all Jeep Wranglers, whether it's an automatic transmission or a manual. And what I want to talk about are the breather tubes on your axles. The breather tubes act as vents for your axles. So as the air inside your differential and your axles heat up, the air expands and can't come out of those vents. Similarly, if it gets cold, the air can go back in. But if you're going through water, those vents have to be high enough up out of the way so that they don't suck water into your axles and cause problems for your differential. So let's have a look and see what these breather tubes look like. So here you can see, this is where the vent starts in the axle to which there's a tube attached and you could follow the tube all the way up to the bottom of the tub and you can see how the tube has these two pins one here and one there that secure it to the bottom of the tub and then there's the vent on the end of the tube now in my jeep those pins for some reason aren't tight enough and come out of the holes that hold the pins in place having had that issue added some material around the pins with the hope that it'll stay tight and in place. But always before you go out on a trail where you're gonna encounter some water and mud, check the condition of these vents and your tubes to make sure they're in the right place. Interestingly, a lot of people will relocate these tubes to locate them further up higher in the Jeep. What we're looking at here is the rear side of the front axle and the breather tube comes out of the top of the differential on my JL Sahara. So this is the breather tube coming out of the top of the differential, comes along here, along this hose, and it goes up, up there towards the engine bay. So right here, it comes right down along this tube into the top of the front differential. 
So let's go have a look and see where that top of that vent is located. So if I walk up to the Jeep and just look past the brake lines in front of the master cylinder, I'll be able to see the location of the cap of the vent. The arrow points to it right there. Let's have a look as we approach it from the front of the engine and we approach where the master cylinder is and we look down below underneath the brake lines. And there you can see it right about the center of your, your screen, the white cap. So you can see for this week's tip, make sure you check the condition of your breather tubes so that you don't run into any problems when you're out there running on the trail. And now let's hear from our subscribers. And now for subscribers tips. This week's subscriber tip comes from our extra storage net that fits between the two front seats video. Although it's not directly related to that content, it is a tip that could prove helpful for some of you Jeepers out there who take your top and doors off. Hey Jeeper Jeeper TV, I just had a somewhat pleasant experience with my local Jeep dealership. I started getting a blind spot monitoring temporary unavailable message on startup. The service technician suggested to me that I check the door wiring harness for some bent pins. Upon checking, I found I had an entire row of pins bent. Save yourself some time and possibly money, if out of warranty, and check for bent pins before you take it to the dealership. Signed, Russell. Hey Russell, thank you very much for that tip, especially since so many Jeepers remove the doors when they're enjoying their Jeeps in the great weather. So those Jeepers out there that frequently remove your doors, be careful and mindful of that wiring harness, especially if you start seeing a blind spot monitoring alert message. Thank you Russell. Hey and if you have any tips, please feel free to put them in the comment section below as they may make it in an upcoming episode. Hey, that's it for this week's episode of Cheaper Jeeper TV. I hope that you found it helpful. Till next week, be well, stay safe, take care.